Well, hey friends, it is Amanda with Metal Modern Design and Deep South Shelling coming to you live on a Wednesday night for a change. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead straight up and say that I've got a lot of friends in the Essential Stencil community and my friend Sharon is still live right now. And so please, by all means, don't hop off of their live to come over. You can always catch me on replay. And um, this is definitely her night and I try not to, to en encroach on the times that my fellow ambassadors are live. So please don't feel like you've got to hop off of her live to come here. Um, you can always catch this on replay for certain. For those of you who are here, I just want to say thank you for being here. Come on in and have a seat. We're going to talk a little bit about some glass art. I think a lot of you have been seeing the really beautiful, hey from New Jersey, the really beautiful glass pieces I've been doing lately and they've been selling fantastically. In the shop, they look gorgeous. I've been creating pieces for the house and pieces for the kids and pieces for the people. And um, it's been a lot of fun. And so I'm gonna show you a little bit about it tonight. And we're gonna talk about some things. Hey, from Virginia, as you guys hop on, say hello and let me know where you're coming to us from. If you're new to me, hey, Charlotte, um, you guys let me know. I would love to welcome you into our community here. Um, I am one of the brand ambassadors for Essential Stencil. I do lives on their page on Mondays. And one of the things we're going to embellish is this gorgeous sign that I created. And actually, this is the direction I intended it to go on Monday. And as I think about this, I did not take my finished photo uh, before. So I'm going to grab my secondary device. And you guys are going to get a little behind the scenes of my staging um, to take a finished photo. Because before I, um, before I embellish this, I need for the, the folks at Essential Stencil to have a picture of it as it is because this is how I did it live on their page. And so you guys just bear with me for a moment and let me snap a couple of quick photos of this piece before we do something different with it. I know, so poor here, but at least you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, so we're going to do a, a few things here. Now, um, there's a lot of different ways to work with glass. Hi, mom. There's a lot of different ways to work with glass. You can, um, resin over the glass. You can use colored glass. You can use clear glass. There's a lot of different things that you can do. It's a very versatile art form. And the thing is, when you create it, it looks very high end. Working with resin is not always the easiest thing. There are lots of different types of resin on the market. Um, and the one that I like to use is called Art Resin. It's a two part. It's got the resin and the hardener and you mix equal parts together and you have to stir it really well for three minutes and then you pour it and um, you let it dry for like 24 hours. Uh, you want to make sure that it's in a, a ventilated area. The kind that I use has no VOCs, but there's still people who have allergies to it. And so you have to make sure you're wearing proper hand protection. And when you're working with glass, you know, sometimes some eye protection is called for. And so um, there's just extra precautions you have to take when you're working with glass and with resin. It's a little bit different than working with a water-based paint and some sandpaper. Thank you for saying my projects have been amazing, Shana. Hey, Sandra from Southwest Florida. Hey, friends. So let me start by showing you guys just a handful of things that I've resined just so you can see some different projects here. So I showed you guys this on Monday if you watched my live. And this is just a really pretty little piece what gives it that glossy glow is the resin. It's got the glass that went over the art and it just upcycles the piece tremendously. And so let me stick it back there before I drop it and break it. It does make it more fragile. Like if I dropped a wood sign, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But if you drop a, a glass resin piece, it's, it's probably gonna damage it. So there's that. So here is just um, a little impromptu, imperfect, four by eight American flag I did just using hand painted stripes over a stained board and an essential stencil, star stencil. And so I painted it very imperfectly, very rushed, let it dry. And then I just added clear glass 
and resined over it. Doesn't that just give it, and it's just a stained board, it just gives it extra dimension. Isn't it so pretty? What do you guys think? I love the pineapple too. Here's another example, just a stained uh, a star blue and just added some stars, some white stars using a star stencil and just sanded that away while it was still a bit wet to create a bit of a faded effect and added just some clear glass and some resin. Can you guys hear the dog walking around in the background? I hope someone's coming out to let him out because he sounds like he needs to, uh, to shake a tail feather. So uh, those are a couple of pieces using clear glass. Now the pineapple used colored glass. And so you can do either one. You can use colored glass or you can use clear glass if you're putting it over something that... Uh, okay, I found this on the web for you can do either one. You can use colored glass. Check it out. I don't know why Siri is like looking things up for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Crazy things. They're always listening to us. Okay, so this is uh, an example of some glass, some colored glass, some clear glass, and some colored shell on just a glass frame. And it creates a different look altogether. And you can see what the clear glass looks like over glass. And this is also resined. And so it's so versatile and so much fun like I pour it sometimes in the middle of these shells and create these cute little jewelry holders that have like buried treasures underneath the water. Um, like here's a cute one with a little turtle. So yes, please do share with your friends. You can get together and do some fantastic art pieces. You guys, so the way I started doing this was years ago, um, I was in a shop and uh, I had furniture and I had signs and I did furniture refinishing classes and I did six foot porch board classes. And my friend who was in the same shop did glass resin art and she always did resin workshops. And so I hung out with her a number of times and got to create art pieces and got to see, it's art resin is the one that I use, um, got to see a lot of fantastic things being created. And that's when my love for this art form developed. It's been probably over three years ago at this point. And uh, I just didn't really get into it because she was such a good friend. And uh, I just didn't wanna like create things that she was creating. It's just kind of a faux pas when, when you're all creators. Art resin is the name of the, uh, the resin that I use. And so uh, that's my friend Patsy that you guys see on here from time to time. And so she's the one who piqued my curiosity with all of this. And so she recently moved to Kansas City. And so I started doing this um, in the shop a lot. And so it's been tremendous for, for my sales. And so this might be something that you might wanna create for, um, for gifts for folks because it's ultra high end. It might be something that you wanna create to sell. It's great for workshops because you can charge a good bit of money for the workshops. And so let me just angle you down. We'll look at a few things. This is just a piece where I've added some glass and some shells. I think I did this live to a little whale cutout. And so this one isn't resined and this one is. And can you kind of just see the difference? So you can do things that are resined and you can do things that aren't resined. And it just depends on the look that you're going for. It is a very expensive craft. Yes, Connie, it's expensive to craft with resin. And that's why you charge a lot of money for it. And so uh, these in the shop, I'm selling for $42 and this is a five by seven frame. And so um, it is, but you have to charge big money for it because it costs you big money. The, the resin, you know, when you buy a gallon, it's over a hundred dollars. It only takes a couple of ounces to do this and so you have to do the math out and see what the cost is and make sure that you are, um, you're reimbursing yourself for it. But it's a gorgeous art and it's something that's unique that not everybody is offering. And so it's a way to upcycle your stenciled signs. And so let me angle you down. You have, you've been wanting to invest in some resin and haven't yet. I'm gonna do some kits. I'm gonna have some kits coming and we'll talk about that. 
Um, let me angle you up before I angle you down. We'll talk just briefly about that. So I have got some really fantastic items that I'm going to do some kits with, including the mermaids, um, including some turtles and some different things that we're going to use to embellish. And we're going to do a number of clinics and a, a kit. And I've been um, a little slack in getting that offered because I've been trying to determine if I need to include resin and everything in the kit or if I should have folks go get their own resin so they've got their resin stash. Um, it's going to take me a lot more time to put kits together, obviously, just being honest with y'all, if I'm adding the resin. But if it's going to deter folks from not getting it, if it getting the kits if it doesn't have the resin then obviously i'm going to include the resin so you guys let me know if it's something would you buy a kit if it had everything you needed and would you buy the kit if the only thing you had to add was the resin let me know because if i send the resin it's just going to be enough to do the project if you buy the resin then it'll be enough to do multiple projects and we'll talk about that but let me angle you down and we will see. Now, again, let me just thank you guys. If you like what you see tonight, if you could do this, I would appreciate you so much. Um, and if you don't already follow my page, I'm going to invite you to follow my page. Okay, so this is what we stenciled using the Essential Stencil stencils on Monday night when I was live over on Essential Stencil. And so it was the It Is Well With My Soul and it was a flower. You guys, I have to apologize in advance. I did not even check to make sure that these were in stock because I was so excited about doing this project, I didn't make sure they were in stock. They uh, are coming back in stock and I think you can get on a wait list for them. They just weren't in on Monday night and I apologize for that so much because I know that's so frustrating to see something you like and not have it and not be able to get it in the immediate. But using the tips, if you want to check out my stenciling tips. This live is over on Essential Stencil and I've got to get it posted on my page as well. But it's it's easy with their stencils. They're very high quality to make a really nice design. And so I had showed you guys that we were going to take some different things. Like you've got clear glass. This is all crushed glass. It can be sharp, so you just want to be careful. But you can take some clear glass to embellish with. I've got smaller glass, smaller crushed glass that you can embellish with. It's different colors. I've got a little bit bigger crushed glass. I've got all kinds of glass. You guys, I just pulled over just a handful of these. Um, some of this is reflective glass, crushed glass. You can get some of this at the various craft stores. I uh, get some of mine. Uh, in very large quantities. I also color and tint some of my own. There's a lot of different things that you can do. And so uh, I will have glass coming soon. You can also add like acrylic bubbles. I do that a lot because under the resin, they just add dimension. You can add crushed shells. You can add whole shells. You know, have you guys seen these bubbles that you can get here, there, and everywhere? I think they call them dragon tears. You can use these. I found these fantastic beads over it. I think this was Joanne, I think. But you can use all kinds of fantastic beads in your resin. I will find reclaimed things, like just little pieces. I had a little um, crab magnet that fell apart. It was metal. And so I just salvaged his claws and his legs to toss into some beach scenes. And so it's really one of those things, if you've got a special bracelet or a special brooch or something that's been passed down through the generations, you can toss these things into your, your resin art. Um, here's, I didn't even think I'm sitting right on a paddle that I did. You can see these are the bubbles. These are the clear bubbles. And this is a little bit of colored glass with a turtle and then a little bit of a beach scene. I always try to toss in some of my beach scenes, I always try to hide a pearl in there somewhere. And I usually will toss a shark tooth in there. Let me see if I can find the shark tooth. And sometimes I make it kind of a, there it is. I make it kind of a, a game to try to find the shark tooth. And it's over here, right here, if you can see that. And so just look how pretty that makes things. And so thank you for saying it's a beautiful paddle. I love that one. 
I need to get it up to the shop. I just haven't yet because I like it so much. So with this, I debated we could just use, and this is not what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna show you. Because we've got such vivid colors here, we could just use some clear glass on this and pour the resin over top and it would create such a beautiful piece that just has some dimension because the color, because it's clear glass, whatever is underneath, like this for instance, the color underneath is what you're going to see. Like the American flag, for instance. Whatever is underneath is what you're gonna see. You just see dimension when you do it that way. So you could just dump some clear glass on here Pour your resin over top, and that would just make it just very lovely. But I'm not going to use just clear resin or clear. Um, I am going to use clear resin. I'm not going to use clear glass. I'm going to use a little bit of colored glass tonight because I just I just like the colored glasses. And so I'm going to start. Even though when I painted this. I did the lighter color in the middle and kind of grew to the deeper tones around the edges. I'm going to start with a generous method of just some crushed, um, and I don't even know the name of this, it's just a, a, a nice blue, and this is reflective glass. What reflective glass is, is there is, let me find a good piece to show you. There's a reflective surface on the back that's like a mirror, and on the front, it's just blue glass. And so you can take the time to flip it all upside down and make sure the blue appears on top, or you can leave some reflective pieces. I kind of like both. So I'm just gonna kind of pile this up in the center. And because it's glass, you're still gonna be able to see through some things here. And then I'm gonna grab some of this chunky aqua. The blue is very chunky. This aqua is pretty chunky too. And I'm just gonna take it kind of around the edge. Now you can put this around this, this glass that I'm using. It can have shards, it can be sharp, and it can cut you. Um, I'm trying to handle it in such a way that I don't get cut just very gingerly. I, I rarely get cut. I have been cut with it, but it's just been very rare. And so I don't want it to be quite so tight. I'm just gonna spread that out just a bit. I'm, I do wanna keep the blue in the center. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the smaller crushed glass that's about the same color. And it's got some reflective properties as well. And I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle it all around. Now it's kind of popping off here, there, and everywhere. And you can use a popsicle stick or you can use one of your paint brushes just to kind of scooch that back around. If you drag your hand across it, sometimes you can get a little shard in your in your hand. It doesn't feel fantastic. And so I would just say, you know, if you're gonna do this, scooch it around with a popsicle stick or a paintbrush. And so I don't have glass all over this whole thing. It doesn't need it. You can just use a little bit of glass. You can use a lot of glass. You could take the time and just, you know, really embellish each and every petal. You can be as um, specific or as non-specific as you want. I might just toss a little, just a little rim of just clear glass right around the edge because that's going to pull that dark tone anyway and I'm just gonna take just a little bit of it, just around the edge. Doesn't have to be much, just kind of a border, just a little bit of a border. And you guys, here's the thing, you can be as creative as you wanna be when you're using these things. There's no right or wrong, and you can add as much or as little as you want, and it's all entirely up to you. And again, I'm just going to you know, push that over just a little, or I can just get a little bit of a line. And actually, I think what I might do, because the, the flower goes off the edge here, and it is a creative process. You know, sometimes I'll put something down and I'm like, mm, I don't love it. And I will scrape all the glass off and start again. I've done that before. 
and that's perfectly all right. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more of this chunkier glass here, and because it goes off the edge, I'm just going to let that clear glass go off the edge too, and take this chunkier blue glass kind of right up to the edge right there where it goes off. I'll just toss a little, if there's any little barren spots. Do you kind of see what we're working with there? back over into the center. Now I can leave it just like this and resin the whole piece or I can grab some of these clear bubbles. I can grab some clear glass as well and I can just toss down some clear bubbles. Now these bubbles have a flat side and a curved side. You can take the time to individually go through and um, and flip each one if you want to. You guys know I'm not that kind of crafter. I like imperfection. I like the imperfection in things. And so when this uh, gets resined, all this is gonna be is just a little bit of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's gonna make it 3D. It's gonna be a bit of, uh, oh, for heaven's sake, my brain's not working. All right. But you guys know what I'm saying. I just put that right in the middle of my blue. So you can use a pair of tweezers if you get a piece that's in a place that you don't want it, or you can just use your hands. And so this is kind of what we're working with. Now, what, I'm, what I will do is I pour my resin. Let me, let me angle you up for a minute and talk to you. So I pour my resin late at night, right before I go to bed. I wait until I've already put my dogs away. I wait until my kids are not out running around the house or doing anything because I want nothing to really be disturbing um, the airflow in the house because I do have dogs. And I will be honest with you, I have mopped parts of my floor two different times today and I've vacuumed. Um, and there's still dog hair. I have a German Shepherd. And so if anybody's out here moving, it's gonna kick up um, just the airflow and that can cause things to fall into your resin. And I will tell you, there are times if you do this as a craft that you will think that you have poured the most beautiful thing and you'll come out the next morning and there will be one single hair that has come from God knows where and it's landed right in the middle of your piece of art. And it is so frustrating, so very frustrating. So it is a craft that can be expensive. It can take a lot of time um, to, to perfect everything, but it's also forgiving um, and it's high end. And so I want you guys to consider it. Um, I will be offering, like I said, the, the individual kits um, just, just so you can get a taste of what it's like and see if it's for you. I will tell you after I did my very first project and I don't have it now because I put it away. The very first project I ever did with, with resin was uh, a Christmas tree and it was fantastically gorgeous. And so, and here's the thing, uh, I saw someone say, oh, it's Andrea said that would be my luck. The thing you can do is you can get a crate or a box and you can put it over it to protect it. It's just, I pour so many pieces at once, like I don't know how I would really do that, but it, I, it might be something that I might have to do. I might have to build myself a little something just to put over all the pieces so that the dogs and the dog hair don't affect what I'm doing it. Um, so let me, I'm gonna angle you back down and we're gonna look at this. And so what I'm gonna do later tonight is I'm gonna mix my part A and my part B. And I'm just gonna pour this over my piece and I'll smooth out the edges and I'll let it dry. And then I'll be ready to post pictures of it by tomorrow night so you guys can see what it looks like and see the difference that it makes. Um, in your piece. Now, this isn't the only piece I'm gonna show you tonight, so I'm just going to lift him up and go slide him over where I resin. And I might not leave those bubbles. I might look at those bubbles and determine that I don't want the bubbles on there. Um, that might be what I decide to do. But let me show you something else. So this is a little sign I stenciled um, earlier today. 
It's a little background I picked up from Crafts Direct. And I used the essential stencil um, design that says, in a field of roses, she is a wildflower. And I did it kind of similar to the, the design that I mentioned to you guys on Monday. And I put part of it one direction and part of it the other direction. I just think that that's just so unique. It's not something that you see everywhere. And so it gives you a little bit of a competitive edge. Now, what I did with this is I took sea glass. And you guys know over on Deep South Shelling, I typically sell sea glass. I don't have any up there right now because I've taken most everything down since I've been sick and I wasn't sure if I would be able to fulfill things. Um, and because I want to revamp the site a bit, but I do have sea glass and I'll put together some of that in case anybody's interested. But these are just little glass stringers that I use and they work perfectly as, um, as stems and they crisscross. They've got a nice lift to them. And then I just took some different colors of sea glass and made them look like the wildflowers. Now guys, I'm not going to resin over this one. This is like the perfect piece to resin over, but let me show you what this sea glass that I've got here looks like. Now, the sea glass that I have is tumbled sea glass. I get it from my shell supplier, um, and it is tumbled natural sea glass, but it is not like 100% legit authentic. Like this stuff has not been tumbled through the ocean um, like legit sea glass. It's very hard to find legitimate sea glass for any kind of reasonable price because the sea glass is created in the ocean from beer bottles and the old coke bottles and shipwrecks and the trash dumping you know it used to be that we dumped our trash into the oceans and so this sea glass would roll up um we don't get that in the gulf in some of the other locations they may get some more sea glass but we don't get a lot of it down here and so i purchase it when you resin over this, this is what it does. It becomes a lot more clear. Now, the deeper the intonation on the glass, the more you can see it. But see how it kind of disappears? So I'm not gonna resin over this. What I will do is just glue this down. And so this is something I wanted to show you. If the whole idea of resin intimidates you, just like with this, I used some Mod Podge and I just put that crushed glass and crushed shell on top of this piece using just the Mod Podge. And it, it holds just fine. And so you can embellish your art without having to go the route of resin and you can just glue it down. You know, you can get, and so this is just one of the essential stencil stencils, and you can get some glue like the Clear Gel Tacky Glue from Aileen's. I got this one at Hobby Lobby for $2.99 and I think I need to snip it a little bit, but I'll just show you real quick. Let's see if I snipped enough of that. I probably didn't. I don't want to snip it too much and make it, there we go, I do see a hole. Okay, there we go. Um, you can just take some of this clear glue and put it on the back of your sea glass or your glass pieces and adhere it right to your board. And it is a way to create a three-dimensional art to add a little something extra to your signs. You guys tell me, have you done anything like this with your signs or do you do art like this at all? Have you ever done this? I'm just gonna glue some of this down so you guys can see how easy it is and how pretty it turns out. And I'm trying to see the comments. Do I know what the name of the wildflower stencil is? I don't think I've got my packaging nearby. I will have to look. It might be one that is also sold out because I've had a knack for that lately using things that are sold out. Just know if it is sold out, it will be coming back. Um, I wanna say it's called something wildflower. I can't remember. I'm so sorry. I will look it up and I will post it for you later. And so I'm just taking just a little bit and you guys, you know, I use a lot of E6000 and I've got some brand new E6000 sitting over here next to me. 
but we have a love-hate relationship, me and the E6000. And so, I, uh, I like this as well, and so it works really nicely. I might have to push these around just a bit more and reposition them, we'll see. It's also a little difficult to do it upside down. And if you get a little, if you've moved it and you've got a little smear of glue, just wipe it with your hand while it's still wet. That's what I do anyway. Okay, I'm gonna position them like that. I kinda of want these just kinda of angled down a bit more. Wipe that little spot. And then we start with the yellow one here. And we're just, so what I do is I'll pour out my sea glass and I will just play with it back and forth until the pieces work for my project. And so, you know, it might take just a little time of going back and forth, just a little bit to find the right pieces that work together to create what you're going for. But friends, I do find that it's, it's, I enjoy it. I think it's a lot of fun. And then it gives me a little bit of a competitive edge when I'm going to sell my signs because I have things that not everybody has. And so we've got these glued down now and we're just gonna glue our stringers. And really, if I were smart, I would only put the glue where the stringer's actually gonna touch because it's raised in some areas, but I'm just gonna put some glue on the whole thing right now. And so this one I've strategically placed where it comes into this one, goes down, loops up, and comes back into this one. Like they're almost on a vine. And so if I was doing resin with this, it would, um, it would all get adhered nicely. But because I've opted not to go the resin route, we're just gonna just get this up in here. There we go. And so just like that, We've used some sea glass and some glass stringers to create a nice three-dimensional piece. What do you guys think? Do you like that? If you do like it, show me some hearts. What do I use for the sim? Those are some glass stringers. Some glass stringers. They're called Vitograph. Let me see, can I do a, sh a video where I pour resin, I will. I'm not gonna do it tonight, but I will do that. Um, there's my friend Patsy, she's on. Am I gonna show me pouring resin? Not tonight, but I will. I probably am gonna do for that, I'm probably gonna do a pop-up, um, a pop-up class. And I'll probably do it on one of the projects that I'm gonna be creating with. And then I'll give you guys the option to purchase the kit if you wanna create the project yourself. Um, and so I'm putting that together now. I have just, uh, just been trying to figure out exactly, I'll be honest, I've just been figuring out exactly how I wanna do it. So you guys let me know. Do you want the resin included in the kit or do you wanna be able to purchase the resin on your own? Um, I'm assuming you want the resin in the kit, but that'll make the kit a bit more expensive. Um, a bit less expensive if you get your own resin, but resin, like I said, resin's an expensive craft, so um, it just it just is. But you can charge good money for it too when you do it. I'm set that aside to dry, and so this is just another imperfect American flag sign that I just painted. This is one of those that I got from, and the hanger's actually up here. I picked this up from. Michaels? Yeah, it still has the tag on it. $12.99, it was 30% off, so this was probably, what, $9? Um, maybe just a little less than that. I would have to do the math. 0.7 times 12. Y'all, yeah, the brain. 840, is that what it was? Um, for this little piece. And I just freehanded on, uh, I stained it, freehanded on some red and white stripes, 
just very loosely painted those stars because they're a little bit engraved and it was a little bit of a beast to do that, but the same kind of thing. So where I used the colored glass on the other piece, on the piece with the flower, you can just take some clear glass and you can just embellish just using some clear glass. Now, you could just pour it up. You can't see what I'm doing. Hello. You, um, you can just pour some clear glass right over the areas that you've already painted because it's just gonna give some dimension. That's the word I was trying to come up with a while ago. Uh, it's just gonna give some dimension to what you've already worked with. Now you can, you can put glass all over the whole piece. You can come back, you can do it in stripes. You can add some, uh, you can add some glass stringers. There's all kinds of things you could do to this. Or you can just kind of put some, some glass on there and just leave the dimension over here in the star field and let it be like the, uh, the, like the stars are raised. And so you can kind of see what that looks like once you pour. And so that's just another way, just another way to maybe use glass and resin to embellish your pieces. And so, you guys, I just used, I've got a, a huge jar of this clear glass, and so I just used a shell to scoop some out. Isn't that funny? I've used it like a, like a, like a scoop. Um, so this is another way that you can do it with the clear glass. So let me lift you up and see what kind of questions we might have. I just wanted to hop on and kind of show you some different ways that you can use sea glass crushed shells, crushed glass to create additional um, dimension in your art. The sea glass you have isn't flat. Now, a lot of places sell sea glass that isn't flat. All of the sea glass that I have is flat. It, do I have a bundle of it here somewhere? I don't think, I, I do see a bag. Hold on, let me show you. I'll show you the bags that I have. The sea glass that I have is flat. Now the crushed glass isn't, isn't always flat. But see, these are the little bags of sea glass that I have. And let me just, I'll just snip this one open. This is kind of perfect because it's patriotic colors. you down and so this is what I've got red is a very rare color even for so some dark and light blue and see how they're all they're all flat and so you have to look for that a lot of the places that have them like sometimes you can find sea glass at like the Dollar Tree or some of the craft stores and for the most part it's chunky it's not flat now some of that chunky glass might work well in doing an art resin project but not as well for some of the the sea glass projects that I do let me see what else we've got for questions um, yes I will do a video where I pour the resin and again for the stems it's vitrograph glass they're glass stringers um, let's see what else Both projects are beautiful. You think first project you would like to buy the full kit. That's kind of what I'm thinking is I will probably, at least for the next couple months, probably offer some full kits. And, ooh, I just lost comments, come back. Um, I will probably do some full kits that include the resin so that you can, you can practice with it and see if it's something you like. Um, I will tell you, after the first time I did it in, in uh, one of Patsy's workshops, I was hooked. And so I love it and I think that you guys would too. And it's certainly a way to, to, to uh, upstage your own projects. And so the name of the glue that I just used, it's uh, pretty inexpensive. It's called Aileen's Clear Gel Tacky Glue. And it's like $2.99. Now I use E6000 a whole lot and I've got a brand new tube. And for those of you who watch me frequently, you know what a big, uh, a big deal 
this is for me to have a new tube of E6000 because it's usually a love-hate relationship. I literally just filleted one open the other day to finish, <laughs> finish up some projects. Literally cut it open to get the glue out of it because it had so many holes in it from me trying to squeeze it out. Just wondering on the wildflower, um, which way will be the top? So I'm going to do it, well, this is still drying. I'm going to do it this way. And so the hangers on the back right here, it also has a hanger over here. So if they wanted to do it the other way, they could, but this is the way I envision it. And I think, is that sinking just a little? Push him back up there. And just a little bit. Um, and so this is the way I'm gonna hang it. And that's the thing with when you're doing the stenciling and you wanna do words different directions, it's a different concept. And so um, some people might love that and some people might hate it, but I think it's pretty unique. And I've already got the other piece over there. So you guys, I hope that this is something that you might consider trying just because it is so beautiful and so fantastic. And I always have little projects left available for me to pour resin on if I finish a project and I've got a little too much resin. Like I said, I always will have these cute little shells laying around where I can just toss a little colored glass in there, maybe a little charm, like that's just a little turtle charm. It just looks like he's swiveling in there. And I just think it's so fantastic. And these big shells. And you guys, I sell the shells for really good money at the shop too. And so this might be something if you're doing craft fairs, if you sell in booths, it might be something that you can add. Now, as you can tell tonight, uh, I didn't do a lot of beach projects. I did some, um, some florals and I did some patriotic. And so I know a lot of you have seen that I do a lot of beach projects and I do because I live at the beach and it's what sells. But you don't have to live at the beach to do these type of projects. You can do the wildflowers and you can do all kinds of things. In my house, of all the crazy things, I've got a big um, horned bullhead uh, that's done with like some pink glass that is gorgeous. That was actually a gift from Patsy. I've got a piece that I did. It's like a big bison head and I've got like some grays and blue glass on it. Um, and it's funny because uh, I'm not really a farm girl, but I, I just love that stuff. Um, so it, there are ways to use it and to sell it when you're not at the beach. Is the resin weatherproof? This particular stuff that we're doing is for indoor projects. There are more uh, more types of resin. There's all types of resin, and that is an important differentiation. If you're gonna create molds with things, if you're going to do pours on tables like my friend Melissa Miller does, if you're gonna do um, use it as a sealant or whatever, there's different types of resin for different types of projects. And so the resin that I use is art resin and it's for art projects. It's for pouring over canvas or pouring over wood or pouring over glass and it's indoor. And so if you're wanting to do things that are outdoor, where do I get the little crabs and mermaids and stuff? I'm gonna be selling them, but I have suppliers um, that I get them from, like like shell suppliers. And they're my shell companies. They're like the folks who come around on their big semi trucks and I go on as a wholesaler and purchase those. And so I will have those over on Deep South Shelling very soon. Um, you bought a beach house last, last month and you love all the beach projects. Well, I am glad to hear that and also glad that you bought a beach house. It's nice to, to come down to the beach and relax. Um, and so friends, you'll have to let me know what you think. Uh, and I will be getting some resin projects posted very soon. And it'll be, I think the majority of you have said that you would prefer to have full kits with the resin so that you can try it out. And I think that does make the most sense. And so we'll start out with some things that are like this size. It'll have the mermaid. If you guys wanna see what that looks like, I've got some of those posted over on Deep South Shelling if you wanna go over there and take a peek. But they're just these cute little mermaids. And I don't think I've got one nearby right now because all of the projects that I've done with those, I've taken to the shop and have sold, but I've got to do some more soon. So I'll have some more to show you soon. So uh, that'll be the first one. We'll be doing some with some turtles and we'll be doing some with some starfish and we'll be doing some with some sea urchins to do as jellyfish and just all kinds of cute things. There's all kinds of cute things coming. And so I can't wait to share this new love with you guys. And 
I, I just hope that you use it as a way to, to upcycle your stenciled signs. And so, look, I want to just thank you for, for hopping on with me tonight. I am feeling a little bit better, Sandra. Thank you. Still still have got my kidney stent right now, and uh, that's not none too pleasant. Uh, and have had a couple of surgeries for that in the past week or two. Um, and I'm waiting for probably a much larger surgery uh, on some kidney stuff coming up in the near future. But... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna rock this body until it quits working. I think we're just gonna we're just gonna keep on keeping on. But I do have to drink the water. Hey, Bev George. Hey, thank you guys for being here. So uh, just be watching. If you want to text me, I'll make sure that I drop this into the comments because I don't even remember what I typed in the comments at this point. But my my phone number is eight five zero seven four nine five two two four. And if you text the word glass to that number, you will be added to my community group that, um, that gets notified when glass projects are either coming live or when there's new glass projects going into the shop. And so I'll make sure that I type that back into the comments here so that you guys can do that. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you guys so much for the prayers. It's been a real struggle. I will tell you, uh, I, I think, I've been live a good many times after I've had uh, some kidney surgeries. I think I've had a, a handful at this point in the last eight months. It's been a little crazy. Uh, thank you, Kim. Hey, thank you, Melissa. Hey, friends. Okay, so thank y'all for being here. I appreciate you so much. I hope you have a fantastic night. We're already on later than we typically are, so I'm going to bid you adieu. Go uh, hug your families, hug your babies, and I'll see you real soon. Bye now.